New details this week in the scandal involving a Southside man who alleges that two uniformed Waltham police officers threatened to deport him unless he vacated an apartment owned by City Council President Paul Brasco. Brasco's reputation has been tarnished in the scandal. So has Officer Paul Tracy's, a 16-year veteran officer currently on administrative leave. As investigators try to determine who's telling the truth, newly uncovered papers from Waltham District Court could damage the credibility of the man, Edgar Gonzalez. They show he was evicted by two Waltham property owners for nearly $15,000 in unpaid rent. In a December 2008 decision, Gonzalez was ordered to pay $9,436 to the Waltham owner of this rundown apartment building on Crescent Street. Court papers show he failed to pay rent from February 2008 to November 2008. Another Waltham property owner, Warren Street resident Ramzig Panosian, declined to speak on camera but said that Gonzalez was a nightmare tenant whose unpaid rent was part of the reason why he lost his Lunda Street property to foreclosure in 2009. Panosian said after his initial deposit check bounced, Gonzalez changed the locks, barring access to the unit. He called police but was told to go through the courts. In February 2009, Panosian filed court papers to reclaim three months' unpaid rent. Ultimately, he lost his $5,400 claim after what he describes as ridiculous counterclaims about the newly renovated building, including this letter penned by Gonzalez in which he claims an injury from a broken railing. Gonzalez could not be interviewed for this story, but his attorney said previous tenant disputes serve only to underscore the legal and proper way to navigate the eviction process. Clearly, that has not happened in this case. In news and television reports, Brasco and Gonzalez have offered very different accounts of what happened on February 17th at 89 Vernon Street. Earlier that day, Brasco learned of a bizarre situation involving Wilfredo Alvarado, a second-floor tenant who had illegally subletted the first-floor apartment to Gonzalez. Gonzalez, in turn, was apparently forcing Alvarado to pay his rent under threat of deportation. Alvarado paid the rent out of his pocket for both units for several months until finally he could not afford it any longer and came to our management company. Brasco says he called three others before summoning his neighbor and Waltham police officer Paul Tracy to determine who was living in the first floor apartment. It was around 10 p.m. and Tracy was in uniform at the time driving a marked cruiser. I just said, you know, you, you're not going to get in trouble for coming by. No, we, you know, he had mentioned, no, we do it all the time. I think he thought it was normal procedure for what police may or may not do on a daily basis, as I thought it would be too. Gonzalez's Cambridge attorney, Tyler Fox, tells a different story, reflecting allegations Gonzalez made in letters to Mayor Jeanette McCarthy and Waltham Police. A police officer, Officer Tracy, either accompanied by Paul Brasco or by uh, someone else who was a police officer, dressed as a police officer, went to my client's home and tried, uh, apartment and tried to throw him out without having gone to court previously to get uh, uh, papers or court permission allowing him to do so. That's illegal. They threatened, or the officer Tracy threatened to deport him, which under those circumstances is illegal. There was never a threat in any way to Mr. Gonzalez. There's a pattern of, I, I think, uh, Mr. Gonzalez in making misrepresentations. After an internal affairs investigation by Waltham Police, the Middlesex County District Attorney declined to press criminal charges, citing insufficient evidence. But Fox says Waltham Police are too close to the DA's office to have conducted an impartial investigation. He is currently awaiting the results of another inquiry by the Attorney General's office. So what about the apartment itself? Fox says that Gonzalez stopped paying rent at 89 Vernon Street because his heat didn't work. Massachusetts law permits tenants to withhold rent for issues that make a residence uninhabitable. On February 24th, Gonzalez did file a complaint with the city's health department. Inspector Michael Delfino discovered broken pipes for the heating system and six other violations in Unit 1. Delfino said Gonzalez had legitimate issues but that the department has been unable to reach him for a reinspection. Brasco responded that he addressed the violations by building this new porch and repairing the heating system. He added that Gonzalez complained only after he had filed papers on February 17th to evict him and three other John Doe's described as trespassers. Since then, Brasco says that neither he nor his management company has been able to enter Gonzalez's apartment to address the other violations. Since then, our keys do not work, do not, uh, are not accessible to the apartment. He believes it's all part of a scam.
Gonzalez was described in the Boston Globe as a 33-year-old Guatemalan immigrant. He continues to live at 89 Vernon Street with no lease and no record of any rent payments. Currently, 89 Vernon Street is full of non-paying tenants who have been evicted. Brasco says that Wilfredo Alvarado, the man who initially raised the alarm about Gonzalez, has been deported. Alvarado was charged with an assault on his brother at the property in May. Overall, not the kind of building you'd expect to be run by a prominent Waltham City Councilor and businessman. I'm very disappointed. I mean, I, I don't, you know, I, I didn't ever want anything like this to happen. I've never had anything happen in the past with any of my properties. Uh, the management company is a great management company, but I think this might have been an oversight at this time. If he doesn't lose the building from unpaid rent, Brasco says he's going to sell. In April, he abandoned a run for the mayor's office for reasons unrelated to the scandal. Paul Brasco says he will run for another term on the Waltham City Council this fall. For Waltham Newswatch, this is Chris Wangler. To a chapter in Waltham's history, this is our...